Good evening. Uh, I'm Michael Chuchek. I have the incredible honor of teaching at this university. Uh, I've had a long day doing just that, but, and uh, I hope to make it through uh, this one and a half hours unscathed. Uh, I'm also a professor at uh, Waseda University in the fall uh, semesters, and uh, I um, am also on a, a, a consultant at times uh, for the uh, diplomatic and the financial community. None of the uh, statements that I'll be making today are going to change the world, and w if you don't make any investment uh, choices based on what I tell you. Uh, with that as my disclaimer, uh, I'd like to begin uh, my uh, look at uh, what I believe is an extremely uh, conservative view of what's going to happen uh, in this first year of REWA uh, that we are uh, currently uh, just beginning. Uh, these are the, the, the topics that I would like to address, uh, the key issues in the upcoming election. There, and uh, if you have ideas of others that are salient, I look forward to hearing about them in the Q&A. Uh, the themes of the Abe administration, I, this is a, a basically an exploration of uh, what it is uh, that the Abe administration most likely will be heading into in the upcoming uh, years. And I think of it's going to be years, uh, if his health holds out. And the practices and end remarks. Coming up uh, in the election in July are a series of basic issues that will be the points of contention over which uh, the election will be fought. In terms of social policy, uh, Mr. Abe likes to consider himself a social policy wonk uh, and uh, was on the social policy committee of the LDP for a long time. Uh, he wants to be able to actually put into place the consumption tax. He, it's an, an actual desire uh, that he has. Uh, the, and that will be a source of contention because uh, it is not popular with the opposition parties. We'll I'll look for a moment uh, at some statistics from uh, the uh, from public opinion polling, which is not exactly uh, as divided as uh, the political world. The 20 million yen problem, uh, the unfortunate uh, honesty of people reporting to the finance ministry that the pension system is insufficient uh, to support people who are entering the retiring age, and if they do not have 20 million yen in their savings accounts, they will starve. Well, maybe not starve, but at least they will find themselves in severe financial straits uh, as they go into their retiring years. Uh, the, furthermore, the signs of an economic slowdown are quite clear, uh, and whether that will uh, affect the decision to finally go forward with the consumption tax, I would say no. And uh, falling birth rates, uh, which are not responding, the birth rates of Japan are not responding to any of the pro-women uh, policies that the, uh, the LDP and Mr. Abe are putting into place. Uh, in foreign policy, the most important issue is the Trump volatility factor, uh, the constantly changing uh, set of rules under which we are operating in the international arena, and Mr. Abe's ability to wrangle uh, Mr. Trump into being a pro-Japan person. Uh, the Russo-Japanese peace treaty, which is going nowhere, but the person over there knows far more about that than I do. Uh, Korean-Japanese relations, which remain incredibly fraught and incredibly unhappy. Uh, would another party, could another party, could someone else do a better job? A question. And uh, it's not had a lot of, been in the news a lot, but uh, Chinese ships in and around the Senkaku Islands have been engaging in hybrid military activities that have been continuous uh, for at least the last three months uh, without interruption, which is uh, not a good sign. In terms of energy policy, not much in terms of that. Uh, the LDP will continue to support uh, the restarting of nuclear reactors, uh, and the uh, opposition will have another opinion entirely and retreat from uh, the uh, feed-in tariff on electrical power provided by solar energy. Constitution. Uh, there are four issues on the Constitution that the LDP has put forward, uh, including the SDF in Article 9, emergency powers in case of natural dis or disaster or uh, state of war, 
uh, free education through high school and uh, a new rule uh, to undo LDP legislation, uh, one prefecture, two senators in the House of Counselors. Uh, and finally, scandals. There are too many to fit on this chart. Uh, I've put only four of them. Uh, the Morikake scandals still have not been resolved. Uh, the cabinet memory remarks of various sorts, Asso's remarks, the remarks of various cabinet members who are no longer with the cabinet. Uh, the incredible ages ashores miscalculations of the heights of mountains uh, dis, uh, based on uh, the most egregious use of uh, Google Maps, and the Maruyama affair of a drunken member of, uh, Japan's, uh, of Japan's diet, uh, musing out loud uh, whether indeed it would be necessary to engage in military activity to, while in the Northern Territories on, as a guest of the Russians, to uh, whether there should be a war with Russia. Uh, that gentleman is still in the diet. He was there uh, yesterday, and he was probably there today. Now, the LDP has made a series of promises for this upcoming election, some of which are realistic, some of which are not. Realization of constitutional revision, nothing new. That was in their original founding document in 1955. Uh, they have not yet managed to change a single period, comma, or, or anything in the Constitution, but it's there. A 600 trillion yen economy, it always helps if you keep changing the base by which the economy is calculated, which they already have done once, upping the size of the, cal of the economy. Uh, raising the cons consumption tax ac according to schedule in order to pay for social programs. The continuing the program of reactor restarts with local understanding, which makes sense. You need to have the locals because you must have local understanding on evacuation procedures. It's a, ne it's a rather negative, but if you do not have that, the, the reactor cannot be started. And local officials understand they have that tremendous leverage. Uh, a barrier-free society of people living in harmony, nice. It's mostly having to do uh, with uh, the build-up to the Paralympics in order to make Japan look uh, as uh, handicapped or especially able to be person-friendly as possible. There is, of course, that, that horrible problem that they, the LDP has with the fake data on the hiring of disabled persons that was done by the government for over 10 years straight, uh, faking its data on how many people with disabilities it was hiring, upping it in many, many ways, and primarily by lying about uh, persons having disabilities or not. Making workplaces more friendly, including the LDP. I say including the LDP because the LDP's number of women candidates is still abysmal, and they recognize that. Uh, no loosening of DPRK sanctions. And this one's important. In the, in the LDP's uh, pr promises, uh, the return of the Northern Territories to Japan and the statement which the Abe administration has, no longer makes that the, the Northern Territories, the Southern Kurils, are inherent territory of Japan. Uh, that's the LDP. Uh, Mr. Abe has been asked in the Diet, are they in an inherent territory? And he has demurred recently in order to put forward the uh, Russo-Japanese uh, peace negotiations. To meet this, uh, the CDPJ uh, and other parties have uh, their own game plan for the upcoming election. Uh, prevent constitutional revision under Abe Shinzo by any means possible. L mo the easiest way would be to prevent him from having a two-thirds majority in the House of Counselors. End of game. Uh, repudiating the success of Abenomics. Abenomics is called a success, but that's based upon figures, they say, that have been goosed uh, particularly uh, the false collection of data involving uh, wage levels uh, has uh, called into question uh, any of the uh, wage gains that were made by uh, non-permanent workers. Postponing raising the consumption tax until some time. Uh, the, the question there is, uh, has not the LDP done a cram down? Uh, the LDP in this, uh, in, and uh, its ally, the Komeito, in the most recent session that just ended today, passed a new, brand new entitlement for child care, which has to be paid somehow. And indeed, the consumption tax rise is supposed to pay for it. Uh, does that not tie the hands of anyone who wants to try 
to undo the consumption tax rise. Uh, pursue a nuclear free society, uh, which was, has always been on the, the, the agenda for the CDBJ and the other opposition parties. Repeal the collective security uh, legislation that uh, the LDP and Mr. Abe put through uh, a few years back. And uh, suspend the construction of the, the Futenma replacement facility at Henoko, all of which uh, will uh, make uh, the relationship with the United States uh, very problematic. But the chance that, it, that uh, any of this will be put into uh, effect is zero, of course. It's merely for propaganda purposes. None of these things will happen because there will be no change in government. So what happened to the double election? Uh, there was a lot of talk about having a double election, dissolving the House of Representatives, and going forward with a, le a simultaneous election for the House of Councillors and the House of Representatives. Why not? The LDP is riding high in the polls. Mr. Abe is riding high in the polls. The opposition is on the floor. Uh, why not do it? And it became a stare down in this current session uh, with the uh, Abe administration putting forward a very specious uh, standard. If there is a move on the part of the opposition to have a vote of no confidence, uh, or it, an actual submission of a no confidence measure, uh, Mr. Abe will dissolve the diet and run a double election to reaffirm the authority that the people gave him. Uh, the opposition looked at that and said, nah, he's not going to do it. And indeed, they put forward that, that uh, no confidence motion. It was voted down by the majority. There was no dissolution of the diet. We're going forward with the schedule as it was. Uh, the double election was always to first gather in the interest of uh, newspaper readers in the politics of the time, but also it was, uh, it was basically a feint from the beginning. There is no reason logically, if, and I do believe that I'm one of the rational actors uh, kind of believers, there was no rational reason to put the two-thirds majority in the House of Representatives at stake when you're already contesting the two-thirds majority in the House of Councilors. It would, that made no sense whatsoever, and that, in, in fact, turned out to be the case. Does the opposition have issues that will entice voters to the polls? And furthermore, do the voters care about the Abe administration's weaknesses? Well, uh, let's look at some numbers. Um, these are the support for the cabinet ratings uh, of uh, the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, administrations. Uh, as you can see, most of them hardly, don't last even 15 months, uh, and they crash uh, spectacularly. The, uh, only the only exceptions are Obuchi, and he died in office, so we don't know where he would have gone. Uh, and then the great Koizumi, Koizumi Jonichiro, and Mr. Abe, who is no, the stability of his uh, support ratings is phenomenal in Japanese modern Japanese political history. It's simply aberrant. Uh, you could say it's because he's had weak opposition, and indeed I'll be arguing about that in just a second. Uh, there is no outlook uh, for it go to go down uh, anytime soon. He might have a little, if there is a major loss in, this, in the uh, House of Councillors election, his, it'll blip downward, but nevertheless he should stay above, safely above the death zone, which is the 30 to 20 percent area uh, in the graph. He's only once dipped down close to the 30 percent line, which was uh, when uh, Kishida Fumio uh, was challenging him for the leadership and there was a, a great deal of disquiet about the collective security uh, relationship. In terms of party support numbers, uh, I wouldn't want to be an opposition candidate. Uh, the support numbers are abysmal uh, for uh, most of the parties. Uh, LDP is way ahead. The only, th the only party that in any way competes with it is no party at all over there. 41% of the people have no support, support no party. Uh, Kometo, it, somebody's lying. It's probably around 5%. Uh, and then Nippon Ishin. So there'll, there'll be a very solid base there. Uh, 
this number actually in the in previous months was above 5.5 and such. So it's there's a good solid number for, for the uh, combined forces of the coalition. I have Nippon Ishin in the coalition on a because it virtually is, and the win in Osaka uh, by Nippon Ishin has basically doubled uh, its popularity numbers, uh, which it was a surprising result. Uh, that it would really affect their visibility. And the, I did not think that would be true. But they have now become a much more viable force. And therefore, the votes that they represent in the House of Councillors for a constitutional amendment now cannot be discounted. Normally, uh, in a House of Councillors vote, uh, the top opposition party polls about double uh, what its original support rating is. So re usually receives a, this, the, from this graph, you would think that the CDBJ will get about 10% of the vote. Uh, now, I realize that the vote is not uh, nationwide, that there are various districts and there are very pla various places where there will be one-on-one -on -one fights uh, or two-on-two -on -two fights going on. That's true. But one has, has to think that the issue is uh, popularity and turnout. That if the opposition doesn't f seem to feel as though it would possibly challenge uh, the Abe administration, then you would have to think that turnout will be low and that will be to the advantage of the LDP, the Komeito, and the Communist Party. Are the opposition parties cooperating and are there any last minute swing issues? Uh, are the, yes, they are cooperating quite successfully. In 32 of the single member districts that are up for grabs, there is going to be a single opposition candidate. They will not be canceling each other out by having w more than one uh, opposition candidate in a single member district taking on the LDP slash uh candidate. So that is a, a fairly decent amount of cooperation right there. Uh, will they be able to cooperate in terms of the multi-member districts? I doubt it. Uh, but uh, the single-member districts is where the LDP would suffer a visual loss and a, and a loss that would be humiliating to uh, the administration. So I can understand that the uh, opposition parties are uniting to go full out to, tr to try to knock off a few of those LDP uh, districts and bring them into the opposition camp. It will be for show. It's not for a change in government. It's not for a change in power. It may affect, in a small way, the possibility of constitutional revision. But the most important thing will be the visuals of taking away the seats of LDP incumbents. Abe Shinzo. Uh, what to say about him? Uh, a few things. Like it or not, and I know a lot of people who comment uh, in newspapers don't like it, uh, who get quoted in the newspapers don't like it, he is a, an historic figure, a remarkable historic figure when you consider that he went through the abyss of the humiliation of resignation uh, from out of a hospital bed uh, and has come back for a second time and is now poised uh, to become not only one of the greats, but the greatest of them all. He's not very far away from being the longest serving prime minister in Japanese history. It's only a few weeks in the case of uh, surpassing his great uncle Sato Esaku. Uh, and then it will happen uh, in later in, uh, in November, he will pass Katsura Taro, Taro Katsura. Uh, as the longest serving uh, PM. That's impressive. That's historic. That means I'm good, is what Mr. Abe can think about himself. And he will have achieved a, an unstated goal, but nevertheless a goal of anyone who wants to take over as prime minister of this country, or of any country. To be the longest serving of all time makes you a, an historic figure. Another thing that I recently saw uh, stated that, uh, yeah, okay, so he's been in the office a long time, but he doesn't really have a legacy that you can really point to. Really? Really no legacy? The creation of a National Security Council and National Security Advisor to coordinate Japan's 
overall foreign policy strategy, which you may have noticed has been pretty awesome. Uh, a specially designated secrets act. We don't know how many secrets it's protected because there's that secret. But there is now a means uh, that to punish uh, both journalists and bureaucrats from trying to expose the mistakes and the uh, venality of the government in a way that's legalized. The Collective Security Acts, Japan now does, can possibly engage in collective security, not that it is in any situation where it is doing so. Uh, nevertheless, the possibility exists for collective security. Uh, which had not existed before Mr. Abe was prime minister. The taming of the CLB, of the Cabinet Legislation Bureau, uh, no one had ever thought before Abe, what if I just put my own man in head of the, as the head of the CLB, and then whatever I want to be constitutional will be constitutional, just by interpretation. No one had ever dared do that. He dared. There were protests in front of his house, in front of the Kante, for months and weeks on end. But eventually the legislation passed, and the, the country has been in a collective security arrangement uh, since then. And it was all made possible by Mr. Abe doing something that no one else had ever tried to do before, which was to take the head of the body that determines what legislation is constitutional or not, it's not the Supreme Court, they, they sleep most of the time. Uh, it's, it's the CLB. And to think that you could just waltz in and put your own person at the top, that's historic. Economic recovery, like it or not, things are good. People coming out of this university in these years are a lot happier than the ones who were coming out of here 10 years ago. Uh, there's simply a great market out there for, for young people trying to get jobs. And Mr. Abe has a right to say, I, I had a part in that. And I have been kicking everybody's butt for six and a half years. What else do you want? And that's true. The, 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 he and his party have gone from strength to strength. They've had occasional losses, and the, the newspapers have puffed those up as to, as to great humiliations. But the Abe administration has simply sailed right through it. Not only as a historic figure, but everyone now looks to him, hilariously in some ways, as a leader of the international liberal order. Uh, he was supposed to be a right-wing fanatic that was to drive Japan into war. Instead, he's a, one of the men of peace. He is also the premier Trump wrangler. Uh, now, that's a very important issue for anyone who ever wants to think of replacing Mr. Abe. Can you? abnegate yourself, demean yourself, put yourself down far enough to get what you need for the country from Mr. Trump. Now, Mr. Abe is uniquely qualified for that job. He has spent his entire life abnegating himself, ingratiating himself to wealthier right-wing men. That is what he knows. It's his speciality. Mr. Mr. Trump was no different than any of Mr. Abe's anti-Chinese supporters. It's the same deal. So he knows it. Can any of his potential replacements, his potential rivals, put themselves down the way he does in front of Mr. Trump? I doubt it. And I don't think of anyone who would want to have that job. Unfortunately, for Japan, someone has to do it. Yeah, I saw, I saw, okay, I saw this. I saw it, okay. Trump muses privately about ending the post-war Japanese defense pact. Let me, let me fix that. Rich white idiot does not know that people listening to him when he's hallucinating, okay. No, he's not gonna cancel the Japan-US security arrangements. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Abe is also uniquely qualified in that even though he has delivered virtually none of the promises that he has made to them, he is still beloved of the right wing. Again, who else can make that claim? Who else can offer that? Who else can assuage their fears and their desires and still end up giving them nothing? Do they have constitutional revision? No. Do they have anything on the comfort women? 
No. Do they have any of their, does he go to Yaskuni Shrine? No. What, did they, what do they get out of him? A promise to put into the Constitution something that people already believe is constitutional, which is the self-defense forces. And they're thrilled. <laughs> Just look at the posters at any shrine. Find the one with Sakura Yoshiko on it. It'll be there, right there. Let's put the SDF in the Constitution. That's how far their list of demands has dwindled. And only he could get away with that. Only he could manage that. Tina, there is no alternative. In the 1960s, uh, the factions would, would kick up challengers to the prime minister at a tremendous rate. Because there was, in the 1960s, the factions in the LDP what had ambitious and ruthless men at the head of each of the factions. Nowadays, you have a cautious personnel manager at the head of each of the factions. In the 1960s, they had separate visions of where they were going to take this country. They have identical visions of where they're going to take this country. Cultivation of new industries and professional groups as Japan is developing. Caring for the existing groups and making sure that they're happy. They're, the factions have the same names. They have all the same parts that we used to think. But let's face it, the folks who are in charge of them are not in charge of, in the way that the faction leaders were in the past. Uh, Nikai Toshihiro did, wasn't even in the LDP when he started in politics. So he's, that's why I have him as the interloper. Aso Taro, don't get him near a microphone. Uh, Kishida Fumio, love him, great. Never polls more than two to three percent as a possibility of being prime minister. Uh, Takeshita Wataru, all of these are, if you don't know, are heads of the factions inside the LDP. Takeshita Wataru, everyone says, oh wait, you're the other Takeshita. That's true, he is. Uh, and then Ishiba Shigeru is the brooding bridesmaid. He defeated Abe in 2012 in the first round of voting and then got defeated in the second round and has never forgotten it. And if you know him, he talks like this. Possible replacements? Uh, th there's been a lot of talk about Suga uh, at the CCS, the Chief Cabinet Secretary. Uh, basically, it's, that's the sheerest way of wanting to have Abe continue forever. Uh, because who, you know, nobody wants him, but he's, but he's, he's absolutely necessary. Uh, Motegi Toshimitsu, the golf partner, he plays golf a lot with uh, Abe. Um, that's basically his qualification. Oh, yeah, I know, he, he's got all kinds of, of nice degrees and, and he worked in, uh, in, in business and all. But let's face it, he's the golf partner. That's because he's supposed to get to make sure that no one looks at the other two. Now, Kono Taro, I have him as the new weirdo based on the, that old saying uh, that Tanaka Makiko made uh, regarding the choices that the LDP had uh, way in, in that very famous election between Kajiyama, uh, Koizumi, and Obuchi you know, as the party leader. Oh, great. We have to choose between the militarist, the idiot, and the weirdo. Uh, the weirdo was Koizumi Junichiro, and who eventually became prime minister. Um, he's somewhat of the new weirdo, and he is a weird guy. Uh, if anyone's ever been to his office, you'll know why. Uh, it's, it's a pile of paper. It's just stuff everywhere. Uh, and then, then there's Ko Koizumi Jr., uh, whom everyone says, great, if he only had three more elections to the diet. He doesn't, so he's not eligible. So there's no alternative. Oh, about the factions. Okay, this is a genealogy of the factions. And they are amazing institutions, none of which appears on the LDP website because they're not LDP. They're unofficial organizations that have existed since the 1960s. Wow. Uh, and they have their own offices, their own legacies, their own histories, their own uh, bureaucratic arrangements. But they're dying. Uh, they, they are basically personnel management institutions. And one of them recently, the Bancho Seisaku Kenshikyujo, just gave up the ghost entirely and just merged uh, with, uh, with uh, Aso's faction, the Equal Kai. That's not the indication of an ambitious, roiling 
uh, challenging environment. It's one, oh, we can do a merger, let's get out of this business. You know, it's not, that's not the situation. Uh, so the factions are not what they used to be. So why am I going on and on about the factions? You may have heard of this speech, uh, by, or this very famous uh, uh, little, little ditty uh, by Harold Halford McKinder talking about how to control the world. Uh, who rules East Europe commands the heartland. Who rules the heartland commands the world island. Who rules the world island controls the world. Um, and uh, uh, Nazi Germany theorists thought this was a great idea. Um, I have a version for Japan. Who masters the appointments is the master of the factions. Who masters the factions is the master of the LDP ele presidential election. Who masters the pre LDP presidential election is master of the party. Who masters the party is the master of the government, and the government is the master of Japan. And that will not change. Because these two do this better than any pair have ever done it. They n have no opposition in the LDP because they have used the appointments that are available either to the cabinet, sub-cabinet positions, or party positions to either enhance or neutralize whomever they want. And no one has ever done it better, ever, that I know of in my couple of decades here. And that's the fact. Until, if they start picking the wrong people and upsetting the factions and the factions start moving against them, fine, it's not gonna happen. Tina, there is no alternative. Finally, he's a true believer in constitutional revision. So, there were a few tricks that were interesting uh, that are ongoing how to avoid having bad news. The first one, the place where bad news normally comes out in Japanese politics is in diet budget committee. So don't have any diet budget committee meetings. And indeed, for the first time for that anyone can remember, after the diet passed the budget for the fiscal year, there were zero meetings of the diet budget committee up until today. Zero, either in the House of Counselors or the House of Representatives. The Diet Budget Committee is where the dirty laundry of Japan gets aired. It's where you humiliate the government. It's where you drag them through the mud and make, force them to answer questions, because anything has something to do with the budget. So any kind of question is fair game. So don't have a session. Genius. And indeed, this is the first time in a long time that anyone can remember that there were zero. Last year, between the passage of the budget and the uh, end of the session, there were eight meetings in the House of Reps and five in the House of Counselors. There were, five, there were plenty of sessions to drag out the uh, entire government and make them answer questions. That did not happen. Neat. Only one question time. They are becoming ridiculous. They're supposed to be like British question time, having them once a year is not like British question time. Uh, so they get a few minutes to, to, to slap Abe around. Of course they're going to then turn around and file a no confidence motion. They don't get enough chances to slap Abe around and they needed a few more minutes to do that and they certainly did that yesterday. And non-appearance of cabinet members at the FCCJ, the, the Foreign Correspondence Club of Japan. Now that, uh, you might say, well fine, they're, they're not voters, who, what, who cares? The FCCJ is not only the Foreign Correspondence Club of Japan, it, it's not only foreign uh, media outlets that get access to cabinet members there. Non-accredited Japanese media outlets work through membership in the FCCJ so they can get around the Kisha Club, get around the regulations that would otherwise prevent them, and just simple uh, freelancers can join the FCCJ and put a question to a minister that they would never have a chance if they went through the normal uh, context. So don't, go, don't send your cabinet members to the FCCJ. Someone might ask an important question. So, uh, in conclusion, 
Securing two-thirds majorities, friendly two-thirds majorities, uh, constitutional revision friendly two-thirds majorities in both houses. They'll have it by the end of the year. I do not think that there's any chance that there will be a sufficient number of changes in the House of Counselors. Uh, there are simply not enough issues that excite uh, the voters. Uh, the voters are not interested in the parties that are in opposition. I think that that's fairly safe, especially with the rise so recently of, uh, Ish of Nippon Ishin. Scheduled application of the consumption tax rise, I think that's inevitable and it's going to happen and I think it's going to hurt the economy far more than anyone could possibly imagine. Uh, there, this is going to be a significant, I'm, I'm just going by anecdotal evidence. The number of people who are tearing down their houses and rebuilding them in my neighborhood is absurd. Uh, it is apps, they're all trying to beat the 2% surcharge. Uh, and there, are, there is anecdotal evidence of hoarding of uh, secondary materials uh, that uh, companies are buying things ahead of time in mass quantities. That means that after the tax rise comes in, all of that is going to crater. Uh, and nobody wants to really think uh, how bad it's going to be. And I think that it's going to happen and it's going to be bad. Full-scale pursuit of the constitutionalization of the SDF, Mr. Abe has nothing left. He will be the longest serving prime minister. What is left for him to put on his resume? This, the thing that he's promised and the LDP has promised since 1955. And it's something that even the Socialist Party agrees is constitutional. That the SDF is our constitutional was the agreement that the Socialist Party made in 1994 to get a Socialist Prime Minister in Murayama Tomiichi. It's not even a question. But they're going to put it before the voters because two um, very important uh, groups are in favor of it. First of all, active and retired SDF, a, an unappreciated important group for the LDP. And the second is the ultra-right wing, which wants, wants a, a win of some kind. A very successful Olympics. I think we can be pretty confident of that. It might be crowded, but it'll be successful. So, my, I used to have a slide that I'd end with, uh, which was Abe Shinzo as Jean-Luc Picard uh, as a member of the Borg and the, a, the, the uh, motto, uh, abandon, you know, you will be absorbed. You know, resistance is futile. Uh, I have a different uh, ending slide today, and it's basically uh, my new feelings towards Japanese politics. Japanese politics is becoming so predictable that I'm afraid I don't understand it anymore. And that's my presentation. Uh -huh.